wanted to come on here and talk about something, something that I get asked about a lot because most of the time the people that are coming to me are women. And one of the things they ask about is they're told by their doctor that they don't have hypothyroidism or they don't have a slow thyroid. So nothing's wrong with them. Um, they're told all the time that everything looks normal on a blood panel. Um, sometimes they're told it's all in their head. I was told that numerous times. Um, you know, but they have all these symptoms. And so they're literally, literally sitting there looking at the doctor saying, <laughs> I have all these symptoms. I have all these symptoms of my thyroid being slow, but you're telling me that my blood panel looks normal. So I wanted to give you my take on this and why I see this so commonly come up because um, I, I see it a lot. And I can vouch for this because this is exactly what happened with me. So first of all, when they tell you that everything looks normal, that's a pretty broad range when they say that. And so that's part of the issue that I have with this is because what they look at for lab reference ranges for your blood panel, for your thyroid, they're completely different ranges than what I have seen that actually are more functional. And what I mean by functional is what you can function on in, in your daily life. So for example, a lot of times doctors are looking at TSH. So they'll do a blood panel. You're telling them all these symptoms and they think you could have a thyroid issue. So they're gonna run a blood panel. Typically they're gonna run TSH. Unfortunately, most of the time I don't see them run anything else other than just TSH. TSH is not a big enough thing to be checked. Um, you need more than that checked. So that's one issue um, is because you're not getting a complete blood panel. Um, they'll just check TSH. Now, the TSH number could come back normal. They tell you that it's normal. Their reference range for TSH is like, eh, as long as it's not, you know, above a five, you're good to go. And so they'll tell you like a four point whatever is totally normal. I haven't found anyone, including myself as a female, especially that can function and feel really good when they're even above a two. Typically, most women feel better when they're between a one and a two. Me personally, I actually have to have mine below a one. If I go above a one, I don't feel very good. Now, it took a long time for me in and out of different doctors um, to understand this and a lot of research on my end to tell the doctors, look, I don't care what you say is the reference range that you think is normal. That's not normal. That is not functional. That's not, I don't feel good there. So. That's one thing that you really have to be adamant about is, okay, what what can we do here? Because I don't feel good at that TSH number that, that, that they think is normal and it's actually not normal. The other factor that I talked about is, have they done a full blood panel? So checking just TSH, you can actually have a pretty decent looking TSH and still have a slow thyroid. And this is the problem is that most doctors will put you on TSH um, or put you on thyroid meds only based off of your TSH number. They won't look at free T3 and they won't look at free T4. Those are your two thyroid hormones, the two main ones. Um, T4 is inactive, T3 is active and you have to convert over. So let's say you get a blood panel back, your TSH looks completely normal, but they didn't check anything else. What if you have no free T3? which a lot of women, they don't, but the doctor never looked at that. So your TSH your, the, is your actual brain signal. That's not actually a thyroid hormone. That is what your brain is doing, telling your thyroid to do. So if it's normal on, uh, you know, your brain signal is actually normal, but what, what about the actual thyroid hormones? And that's what they need to look at. And that's one of the reasons why I've seen so many women where they actually don't have a normal thyroid, but they're told that it's normal. And so they never get a diagnosis of hypothyroidism. Um, some other things, and this is what I talk about in my group program. It's actually open for enrollment still right now. Um, I talk about all these different things that can come up in your body that actually are slowing the thyroid down, but your blood panel could look totally normal. So one thing that I really dive into is um, eating for your thyroid. And I did a whole nother live and a, a bunch of videos and stuff about eating for your thyroid, but you can actually eat certain things that can slow your thyroid down and eat certain things can, can, that can slow can speed your thyroid up. Now, I base more off of if I do hair tissue testing with someone, I can get a little bit more in depth, more customized for you. Um, and that's what I do with a lot of my women that come to me. Um, but as a general rule, what I have found that if you're eating an extremely high fat diet, like a ketogenic diet, if you have a slow thyroid, even if you've never been diagnosed, sometimes it just doesn't work. 
Um, and if you want more information on that, I did a whole video on this a couple days ago. Um, you could go back and look at that one. Um, I really went, went way more in depth on that one. Um, the other thing is what's your liver doing? If you have a whole bunch of toxins built up, the majority of the conversion of your thyroid hormone, and I did another video on this recently, the majority of the conversion of inactive to active thyroid hormone is actually in your liver. So if your liver's bogged down, you're going to have decreased conversion. You're going to have decreased active T3. But the doctors don't look at that. They're there because there's not a specific blood test that's going to go, oh, your conversion's off. But you have to look at the full panel to know if your conversion's off. And they don't do that. And so that's why I actually have um, a guide called the Secrets to Reading Your Thyroid Blood Test. It's all on that. It's all on what you should get checked, why you should get checked, um, what the reference range looks like, what it should be. Um, so if you need that, grab that. Um, I have a link in my bio. You can look at that. Um, and then some other factors are what's your stress like? And I talk about this all the time. If you are super stressed out, your adrenal glands are connected to your stress. Whatever's going on, any type of thing in your body, it could be a, a physical stressor, it could be an emotional st stressor, it could be a mental stressor. But if that's gonna really be bogging down your body and causing your adrenal glands to be sluggish, they're connected to your thyroid. So if you're le leading a really stressful life, you hate your job, you, you know, not happy with your spouse, things are crazy with virtual school, you have all these things that are culminating and you probably have a slow thyroid, that interconnection, it's there. And so it just can uh, culminate and culminate and just add on to having an even more sluggish thyroid because you're totally stressed out all the time. There's such that interconnection. So you really have to be careful with how much stress you're under. And like I said, stress doesn't have to be like a, a you know, kind of a, like a physical stress. It can literally be, um, you know, if you're drinking too much, if you're eating really bad food, if you're taking tons of toxins in um, with your beauty products and stuff like that, that's all stressors. That all adds up. So those are just some of the things that um, I really wanted to talk about that can really give you that slow thyroid thing, give you all these slow thyroid symptoms, but unfortunately, um, doctors don't tell you that. And so you never get a diagnosis. And this is why I'm adamant with women that come to me. I'm like, I, I don't need you to have a hypothyroid di diagnosis. You do not need to have that diagnosis to have a slow thyroid. Um, I see this all the time. You can have a really slow metabolism. You can have a really slow thyroid and it's because you're, the things just aren't working very well, but it doesn't mean that you have to have that diagnosis. And that's exactly why I created the group program was for us to look at all the things because there are six modules in it. It's looking at all these things that could slow your thyroid down. That's not going to show up on a blood panel. And so you don't have to keep being told that you're crazy, that it's all in your head, that there's nothing you can do, that you're just getting older. By the way, I was told that when I was 22 that I was just getting older and that's why my thyroid wasn't working. So reach out to me if you have any questions, you want more information about this group program. Op Roland is open still. It will be closing after Wednesday because um, I want to keep it kind of a quaint, um, smaller group of women. But I'm so excited. I have some women already signed up for it. They're so excited about this. Um, again, uh, enrollment's going to be open until Wednesday midnight. It's going to close. So let me know if you want more information on this. I would love to help you. It'd be so much fun. We'll have such a good support team. All calls will be recorded too. So you'll always have access to it. So if you have any questions again, reach out and hope you guys have a great day. Bye.